Hey everybody, as we dive into calculus in the second semester, we're going to look more at some advanced integration techniques. And this is the first video that I'd like to share with you in this unit of advanced integration. Specifically, I'm going to go over two different integration formulas for you. And they're, they involve arc sine and arc tangent. And so to begin, let me share these formulas with you, and then I'll do a series of examples to show you how they work. So the formulas are at the top of the page right here. And if you see an integral of 1 over the square root of a squared minus u squared du, then that's going to basically be our arc sine formula. And remember, if we go backwards to derivatives, think back to when I asked you to find the derivative of an arc sine or the derivative of an arc tangent, that the derivative of arc sine was 1 over the square root of the square, sorry, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared and our tangent's derivative was 1 over 1 plus x squared without the square root in the bottom. So we're basically going backwards, and we're going to see elements of those here inside of the integral. But there's a little bit of a twist. So u substitution is going to come back and make a little minor play in these problems. Let me begin by going over example number one with you here. So what I would want to do first here is identify what is a and what is u. Looks like I have a squared as 1, so a is 1. And u squared would be the function. a represents the constant, and u represents the function. So u squared is x squared, which means that x, or that u, is equal to x. Now, if I go from this integral back using the formula, I'm going to have arc sine of u divided by a. u is x, a is 1, and then don't forget your constant of integration, which is a plus c. So final answer, arc sine of x plus c. This is, an, this is an indefinite integral, so we're writing antiderivatives throughout this video today. Make sure we have plus c's on our final answer. Problem number two. Notice this one here. It's an arc tangent setup. I have a 1 in the numerator. In my denominator, I have x squared plus 9. That matches this antiderivative pattern here, this formula of 1 over a squared plus u squared. So it looks like a squared is going to be 9, which means a is 3. And u squared is equal to x squared, so u is equal to x. Now notice this, the arctangent antiderivative has a 1 over a multiplier in front. We've got to be, make sure that we remember that and uh, use that appropriately. So I'm going to have 1 over a, 1 third arctangent of u over a, or x over 3. And just following the formula that I've highlighted in yellow so you can see exactly where these values are coming from. And that's it. So there's a very basic example of both arc sine and arc tangent. So we have to make sure we can identify the, the pattern and the use of the formulas in these integrals. Now, unfortunately, it's not that simple. Here are two more examples that take arc sine and arc tangent antiderivatives to a little bit more of a challenge. And so I'll show you how this, how this works. Look at number three. And let's begin by finding, again, the a value and the u value. It looks like a squared is going to be 1. By the way, I noticed that this is a, a square root of 1 minus 2x squared that's taking the form of arc sine. So I would want to be using arc sine here, not the arc tangent formula. So a is 1, u squared is equal to 2x squared, and here's where I have to be careful. u is the square root of 2 times x. Well, here for the first time now, I don't have u and x being equivalent, which means I actually need to do a little mini u substitution on this problem. And I'll show you how that looks. Put a little star right here and make a note to use u sub. So let's find the derivative here, du. du would be the square root of 2 times dx. And if I isolate dx, I'll divide by the square root of 2 and end up with this expression. Now here's the piece that I want to substitute back in to my integral. Let me rebuild the integral so that it's all in terms of u. So we have uh, this 1 over root 2 du is going to replace the dx up here. 
So I have the integral of the 1 over root 2 and then a du over there. 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared, or a squared minus u squared. So that's my arc sine formula. But, I, but if I forgot to do u sub, then I would have forgotten this outer term here of the 1 over root 2. So I'll just draw an arrow, carry that down, copy it. And then this integral is the arc sine formula. So arc sine of u over a root 2x divided by 1 u over a, and then don't forget plus c. All right, so all of that is the antiderivative. Again, it's u substitution that we have to make sure we catch so that we don't miss that 1 over root 2 piece in front of it. So, uh, similar problem here with arc tangent. Let's do that one. So I see here that a squared looks like it's the number 2, which means a is root 2. And the function u squared is 9x squared. So regular u would just be the square root of that, which is 3x. And again, look at this. I'm going to put a star right here. I'm going to need u substitution because u and x are not perfectly equivalent. So let's find du and then divide by 3. So I have a 1 third du equal to dx. I'm going to come back up here and replace the dx with the substitution. And that will become a 1 third du. What's left over in here? 1 divided by 2 plus u squared. And again, there's my arc tangent formula. So carry down that 1 third. Now be careful. There's another. I have a 1 over a. Let me just write down the formula here. 1 over a arc tangent of u over a plus c. Now let's fill in the different pieces. But look at how that 1 third is out in front of everything. Don't miss that detail by forgetting to use u substitution. All right, let's finish the problem here. I have 1 third times 1 over a. a is root 2. So 1 over 3 root 2 times arc tangent of 3x over root 2. And then a big plus c, the constant of integration at the end. So you can see how these formulas uh, can get more complicated and uh, can be a little bit tricky if we don't miss if we if we miss that u sub piece. All right, so those are the formulas. What I'd like to do now to close the video is just three additional examples, and I have an easy, a medium, and a challenging problem for you to try. So um, as always, if you want to pause the video and try these on your own, that's always suggested. So here they are. We'll start with the easy one. I'll do the medium one next, and then I'll close with that challenging problem. But if you'd like to try these on your own, go ahead and uh, stop that video here and see if you can do them. OK, I'm going to begin with the easy problem. So this, to me, looks like the arc sine formula. Um, a is equal to 2, and u is equal to x. No need to do u substitution because I have equivalency right there on u. Uh, du essentially is equal to dx, so there's no need to worry about a u sub. So I can just jump right to my solution of arc sine. Well, here's the formula, arc sine of u over a plus c. So this answer is going to be arc sine of x over 2. Nice and easy. How about a medium problem? I see here that a squared is 16, so my a value will be a 4. Looks like the u function would be the square root of 4x squared, or 2x. Going to need to use u substitution. dx is going to get replaced by a 1 half du. So 1 half du. And then 1 over square root of my 16. That's basically the a squared minus u squared. And there's my arc sine formula. So 1 half times arc sine of u over a, 2x over 4 call that one half. There's the medium problem. And we'll close here with this uh, challenge problem with e to the negative x. Let's see what's going to happen here. 
Now, um, again, it's maybe hard to tell if this is an arc sine or arc tangent, or maybe it's something totally different, but this is actually going to be an arc tangent. And, and it's a little misleading because if you look back at the formulas, we are only going to look for arc, arc sine and arc tangent if I have a one in the numerator. And what makes this challenging is I don't have a one in the numerator. I have a function. I have an e to the negative x. But what's going to happen here with a clever use of u substitution is I'm going to be able to manipulate this integral so that I will have a 1 in that numerator. Here's how it's going to work. But it is arctangent. There's a plus sign down there. No square root. It's not arc sine. It's going to be arctangent. So let's begin. a is going to be 1. u squared is, neg is e to the negative 2x. So regular u, if I raise both sides to the power of 1 half, so I'm taking the square root, will be e to the negative x. So the derivative here, du, is negative e to the negative x. And if I divide by negative 1, there's my substitution that will get me a 1 in the numerator of this integral. So let's see how I can use a negative du to replace e to the negative x dx. negative 1 times uh, du in there. I'm going to have a 1 over a squared plus u squared. 1 over a squared plus u squared. And that's the arctangent formula. Carry down your negative. All of this is arctangent. And the formula, by the way, is 1 over a arctangent of u over a plus c. Let's plug in our values for a and our function of u. So negative 1 over 1, arctangent of e to the negative x over 1. And there we have it. Negative arctangent of e to the negative x plus c. Easy, medium, and challenging one to end with. So those are the two formulas that we're going to use in this unit on advanced integration. Two formulas to remember the antiderivative of uh, this 1 over square root of a squared minus u squared. That'll be the arc sine antiderivative along with um, the 1 over a squared plus u squared in the integral. Look for the 1s in the numerator and look for the denominators to match that pattern, that formula, and then um, your, your antiderivative will be arc sine or arc tangent. And watch for those nuances involving u substitution. So that'll get you started with advanced integration. Hope this video was helpful. And as always, thanks so much for watching.